the Environment, Science, Technology and Innovation Minister nominee, Dr. Kweku Efriye, started the day for the committee. He answered questions in relation to the management of e-waste in the country. This is a very, very serious problem. And uh, as I watched it, a lot of things were engaging my attention. As a physician, I know that you were inhaling toxic fumes. It can cause so many problems. Even the metals in the, the plastics that have been you know, it changed from solids to, you know, um, gaseous plumes. When you inhale them, some are carcinogenic, some will, uh, can lead to so many things in the lungs. But the problem you've asked is actually a social question. How do we stop these kids from being here? I believe it's a function of poverty. And it's a function of ignorance. And it's a function of neglect. That's the relation of parental duty. All are in there. I believe that as a lead ministry in this area, I have to collaborate with my colleagues, especially the Ministry of Immediate Work Council. It's a gender and children. We have to collaborate. Local government, education, so that we come up with a strategy to get the kids off. The waste itself comes within my purview and it's almost exclusive, simply my problem with regard that's the EPA's problem. But the question, if I understand you, is more protein than we think. And it is not under, with all due respect, under the ambit of the MST alone, Ministry of uh, Environment, Science, Technology, and Innovation alone. So we need a collaborative effort. And uh, I've named some relevant ministries that we have to work with. I'm sure they have a lot of, uh, there are even elements of child labor. He also touched on what he would want his legacy at the ministry to be. With all humility to talk about legacies now, let me get over this hook. But I tell you, uh, I've always described myself as a fighter. One thing that I've been thinking of is in all humility, recommend to my president that maybe he should be thinking of a, a, a decade of innovation a decade of innovation for this country. Because Mesti, when we talk about innovation, there are so many facets of it. So we should have a, a national dialogue, even innovation in the arts. The president has done a lot of things that people might not even realize. Even the cultural setting. This it started as Friday where people used to put on a look, look up at a fabric soon. Now is the norm. If you put in a jacket, it look like you are gradually even becoming an outcast. That is innovation, a mass innovation. But even me, I will be in the scientific arena. So we should have a desk which makes sure that science, technology, and innovation in all the sectors, somebody who will be looking at their work plans, their programs, and make sure that is what is the best way of doing this. Dr. Usu Efriyakoto took the seat to be vetted for the food and agriculture portfolio. He was confronted with the employment figures associated with the Planting for Food and Jobs program. Honorable Chairman, I will have to come to, back to him on that. But I want to make a very clear explanation. We are talking about job creation, which is part of the title of the government's policy, planting for food and jobs. The jobs are deriving from the food that we are producing in abundance for the people of this country and beyond. 
the only determination of the figure ideally will be to have a labor census in the areas that planting for food and jobs are being conducted. But it is not possible to conduct a labor census to determine accurately the number of jobs created in the areas that planting for food and jobs are, are, are being undertaken. So you have to rely on estimates. And those estimates, the figures that are given, uh, uh, that is quoted by the honorable member, are uh, derived from the estimates that we make. We are not saying that it is to the last person, but just to give a comparative uh, analysis in terms of the fact that, if, you, for instance, in the case of maize, I mentioned earlier, uh, uh, honorable chairman, that maize production has gone up from 1.8 to 3 million metric tons. Obviously, using the labor-intensive methods, because we have very little machinery, it has to be by hand that this increased production takes place. And of course, it will mean that more people are engaged in, in be, to be able to produce the quantities that we are talking about. So I don't think we need to split hairs about whether it's 1.8 million or 2 point something million. Basic question is, has production taking place? Has the growth taking place? We are saying yes. He also commented on the issue of surplus food production in the country. There have been more than double uh, uh, increase in doubling the uh, production of rice. And therefore, the, 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 the quantity of mill, the mill, milling capacity is expected to go up. Unfortunately, the private sector has been very slow in taking up this opportunity in rice milling. Um, so government has had to enter into an arrangement with countries like Brazil and India to bring in farm machinery of which harvesters and uh, uh, milling facilities are a major part of, of what is going on. So government is taking, uh, uh, has taken note of this shortage and I'm sure that this year, both the Brazilian supply and the uh, 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 Indian supply of machinery will be able to address this issue that we are discussing. In fact, there has even been an improvement in the supply of plantain since I made that statement. Don't forget, plantain, like any other food crop, is a, is a seasonal has a seasonal supply characteristic. So you find that after the harvest, there's a lot on the market, and as we enter the, the dry season, production and the supplies go down. We can say with the monitoring that we are doing for even exports of plantain, that was unheard of. Export of plantain. You go to Agadugu, there's a special place, and I'm sure you saw the television clip where journalists followed a, a, a truck of plantain from Agogo to Agadugu, and I'm very confident, and I don't think I'm the only one. I mean, there are a lot of people who bear witness to the fact that supply of food in Ghana has in, improved considerably uh, under my watch.